Chancellor Olaf Scholz is to meet Germany's 16 state governors to address ways to deal with large numbers of migrants, an issue that has become a huge political problem for the government. This comes as shelters for migrants and refugees are filling up, and Mr. Scholz has said many more are coming. The country has also seen more than one million Ukrainians arrive since the start of Russia's war in their homeland. Over recent weeks, there has been a flurry of government activity, including legislation to ease deportations of unsuccessful asylum seekers, to stiffen punishment for smugglers, and allow asylum seekers to start working sooner, and the introduction of temporary checks on the Polish, Czech, and Swiss borders. Mr. Scholz, whose government is trying to negotiate agreements for countries to take unsuccessful asylum seekers back in exchange for more opportunities for legal immigration, has signaled skepticism. Elsewhere, China has accused Canada of carrying out malicious and provocative actions in the South China Sea. This is after the Canadian Navy said Chinese fighter jets endangered a helicopter in two close intercepts above international waters. The comments revealed last week that a Chinese warplane fired flares in front of a Canadian military helicopter on the 29th of October, an operation that Canadian military officers said was reckless and could have resulted in the downing of the aircraft. Canadian Defence Minister Bill Blair, during a briefing, argued that the Chinese jet's actions were deemed to be significantly unsafe and put the safety of all personnel involved in unnecessary risk. Canada said both incidents took place in international waters within the South China Sea. Moving on now to Germany, where police say they have arrested a man and rescued a child at the center of a hostage standoff at Hamburg Airport, ending a crisis that had forced authorities to close the busy air hub. Police say the 35-year-old man who was suspected of carrying a gun was with his four-year-old daughter and was thought to be involved in a custody dispute. He was reported to have driven a vehicle through the gates of the airport on Saturday night. The episode raised concerns over security at the airport less than four months after climate activists got onto the runway and blocked planes. Days after 153 people were killed and several hundred injured, another strong earthquake with 5.6 magnitude has struck Nepal. The earthquake struck in the Jajakot and the Rukum district of Kanali province in Nepal, causing widespread damage. Following the initial assessment of the remote damage assessment, around 1.3 million people might have been exposed, and about 0.25 million people may need humanitarian assistance within 72 hours of the earthquake. In response to the earthquake, referred to as the largest to impact Nepal since the 7.8 magnitude earthquake in 2015, the United Nations agencies have been providing temporary shelter, food, and non food items. The impact of this latest earthquake is compounding the difficulties and vulnerabilities of communities with low socioeconomic indicators and stretch coping mechanisms. 